Hello, and welcome to you now Let's Play Me Game of Six of Shelter. Before we start, if you're interested in the, playing this game, you can get it, I believe, for free on their itch. You know, the uh, older versions. Or if you want to give them some monies or get the most up-to-date version, you can go to their Patreon. And this version is 28. Also, sorry, Shelter, I'm testing how uh, Facebook does with uh, me changing my camera from a on the top to being on the bottom. Ooh woo. I heard that was better. So we're gonna try it. And I can only see, you know, in when doing it. So, on the last Let's Play, let's see. I think it was that Rune got the notice that I'm supposed to go to the capital, the main character. And then, yeah, he kidnapped us and has taken us to the capital of the wolves and stuff. And uh, then Burry caught up with us. I was uh, pushed along with the wolves while Burry and uh, runes are going to have their fight right here. Also, I don't know how far, you know, I know that version 27 is available, but 28's not available yet for everybody. But I guess that, you know, by the time that we get to the part where there's the uwu scene we it should be uh publicly available and if done i'll just hold off anyways it's cold it should feel good to me this is my element after all however even the in the ice and wind the guilt inside me burns uncomfortably i think we got to that part Okay, I don't know. Let's just uh, quickly go over it. I think we did this. Okay. Huh. Didn't we save that? I guess not. But yeah, as you can see here, I'm going along. I guess, like, that. there's that one monster which is supposed to be his uh, paternal dad. Um was catching, just constantly hounds him. And then Burry Tangle Root catches up with us. But then there's the monster that's trapped in the ice that Burry did, and he kind of made it sound like, you know, Burry was going to use the monster. I wonder how monsters get that big, you know? But, you know, I think it's fine to uh, skip to the part where there's the uh, fight. He? I dig my claws in the ice and dash at my enemy. Ooh. Okay, there we go. It seemed like there was a music overlap. He raises his foot as if preparing to counter me with one of his mighty mana charge slams. Ooh, ooh. What a fool. That thing's short of an... Ember would threaten me. I don't know, he did do that punch. And he cannot gain access to those in a battle between two canines. Whatever he thinks he may do, there is nothing he can there is nothing he can challenge me with in a fair duel. It's been a while since I've actually read. Over about maybe a month and a bit. Did work and then went to MFF. Good times. Although my count through my countless battles, I have developed such a quick such a quick battle wit that calculating possibilities and solutions in combat come without as much as a as a thoughtless reflex. I can bait him with mortal feints, as many as it takes to catch it, him in an opening he couldn't possibly correct in time. His fighting cell is much less sufficient than mine. This will end in a single strike. Watching his body closely, I draw closer and closer to him in each quick leap. His muscles tense under the thick furred skin, and I read a clear commitment to the strike in his mind. I jump to the side, ready to either thrust my dagger or make another feint. His foot slams against the ice with mighty force as he fully fails into, into his blunder, falls. 
and make another feint for good measure and then leap at him from behind with it, the shining black edge ready to strike it is the um, like weapon that causes uh, monsterization I wonder does monsterization happen naturally you'd have to assume this is the end because monsters are a problem you know but then suddenly the ice by her feet explodes in a cloud of blinding snow damn it I can't see him but I can still feel his presence. Without hesitation, I strike at the spot in the blinding white where I can still sense him standing. I bet that's a feint, because, you know, magic master or mana master. To my surprise, my blade doesn't find the mark. This is exactly like last time. Fuck. With every m muscle fiber in my body, I push myself to the side. The St. Bernard's crackling fist brushes against my whiskers of my muzzle. For a split second, I come eye to eye with the terrifying face of the rabid canine. I jump away in fear, barely avoiding having my ribs shattered by his knee. As I lose him for, from my sight in the blinding white cloud of snow, I make a quick slash to clear my vision in front of me. He's nowhere to be found, and yet, I can feel his presence shifting from place to place, everywhere around me, at the speed of lightning. This must be an illusion. He keeps the icy cloud charged with his own mana to confuse my empathy. It's some impressive display of mana control. But such crude technique must be extremely draining on the spirit, an all or nothing desperate attempt to finish the battle quickly before exhaustion. Unfortunately for him, I am not in such a hurry. I jump out of the cloud of snow, making a cautionary slash around me in case he was waiting for me there. He wasn't. I'm alone. And the thick frost in front of me starts to slowly dissipate. Was that all? Was that all of his power already? Another sla loud slam echoes through the air. Further away, another cloud of icy snow raises over the surface of the frozen lake. Is both away from me and my soldiers. What's he playing at? There's no way he's running away, is he? The white sparks on the surface of the black dagger start to dim, but that's okay. I might have underestimated him. He deserves to be slain with a proper weapon. I leap forwards uh, towards the Noonlight's Oath, my sword. I pull its beautiful blade out of the ice. Then, I motion for my soldiers to spread and surround the duel area. I leave half a dozen of the strongest dogs to guard the human. I don't know what you're playing at, but if you don't plan to honor the sanctity of a duel, a hunt it is. With concentrated magic burning through my heart and mind, I let out a howl. In perfect unity, a dozen other voices return the call. They submit their own hearts and minds and bodies to me. Let's finish this the canine way. No! Stop! Please! I'll go with you. I'll cooperate. Just let him go. Don't hurt him. Stand down, Burry. Sit. My fingers tremble, and I fear people dry in my mouth. Hearing him plead helplessly to spare his friend, I feel my insides cramping in a terrible wave of guilt. A weirdly familiar feeling. A recollection? Like, if all of this has already happened before, when was it? Fuck. My whole pack can feel me. I can't be weak right now. I turn my head to the human surrounded by my soldiers, and motion for them to knock him out. With my mind fully focused on the enemy, I leap high into the air. With pack enhanced might, I make the magic charge slash at the freshest cloud of snow, a good hundred meters away from me. Deep gash runs through the ice surface, and the frost fog gets split widely in the middle. Soon after that, I see through Jake's eyes how 
the big St. Bernard dog runs out into the open and then dashes across the ice in a seemingly random direction. Get him, I shout in my mind, and the soldiers charge in, aiming to surround the prey. I'm clearly aware that all of this could be Burry's plan to get a hold of the human somehow, so I issue for his guardsmen to connect with it in their own pack mentality right away. I'm not going to lose him. I dash through the remnants of the old snow clouds, following the trail of Burry Tanglefoot through the senses of my soldiers. Another loud slam, and another explosion of ice mist. Roaring from my sword's fighting expertise, barring the long blade. Uh, the long blade fighters in my pack slash through the white puff, clearing the view with distant slashing techniques, just like I did before. We hear a grunt, we smell blood. There's a shallow wound, but it still takes the prey, makes the prey feel scared and desperate. You're out in the open again, this time roughly in the same direction. I can see him heaving in exhaustion. He must be finally reaching the limit of his strength. Suddenly, he stops. Struggling a gasp for air, he stares at his feet. My pack surrounds him, still keeping a safe distance. I'll be the one to deliver the final blow. Here. Done running away like a rat, Sir Burry Tanglefoot? Charging so much raw mana through the ice for so long is quite a surprising feat. You must be barely standing on your own feet by now, are you not? Any last words? Never mind. No one is going to remember them either way. Holding the oath in one hand, I whisper the quiet chant at the black dagger once again. The ominous white sparks crawl along the cracks of the edge with revive intensity. You can see he's about to fall to his knees. So tired. But he won't give up. For the sake of his friend's freedom, he came here to meet his death. This is for you. Father. I hope this makes you proud. Shatter, enemy of the Crimson Royal Grove. At the same time as the dog takes a deep breath and shouts at the top of his lungs, taking a wide swing with of, it, of his fist, crackling with the very last remnants of his vitality. I rush at him with my body, with both weapons at the ready, having absolutely no doubt to my ability to outmaneuver and finish him with the dark blade. And yet... I'm stopped barely at my first step. Two swords halt my advance. Held by Jake and Chip. Both me and Burry stare at them in bewilderment. General, please. That's enough. What the fuck did you just say to me? What do you think you're doing? G General, we can all see it. You don't want to do this. Suddenly, I re realize that my connection with the pack has been completely broken. The soldiers around me all look with very confused looks. Fear, sadness, resolution. That's so wrong. Those aren't the faces of soldiers we tempered through the years of grueling discipline. You're forgetting your <laughs> dog damn place. This isn't up for debate. This is treason. But I know you aren't acting like yourselves. Your hearts are corrupted. Can't you see that? You lost them to that cursed temple. But the scholars of the grove can help you. I curse the curse of shelter can be beaten. Just look at me. I never lost my way. And you? That too can return to... He did change too, General. Ever since the day we met you, 
it was in shelter when he first saw you truly happy. Just like the moons of the legends. They stare at me with those pitiful looks, as if expecting something of me. Their eyes shimmer with that naive, hopeful light, like if they can see something I don't. Even Tango Root cautiously lowers his fists and looks in a familiar manner. Like the eyes of dogs, at long last, return to, with their loved ones, reunited. I swear I can read. They all pledge loyalty to our people. And there is no greater loyalty to the canine nation, as it is following you, Moon. The legend written in hopes and smiles. All of this, right now. Dogs killing dogs. That's not you. Ready for any punishment you see fit, but please, reconsider. If you kill him now, we're afraid you'll never be able to. With a single slash, I shatter both their blades. In an instantaneous thrust at Jake's chest pierces through his armor and sinks the tip of the oath into his sternum less than an inch before his heart. Boy... I'm not Moon. I'm not your legend. In me, me. Fostered by General Gunner, not to be happy, but to serve. And all of you are the same. None of you can afford to be selfish. Do you know what, what happened when we were just wasting our time there instead of returning south? Do you? The rest keep in the southern border was taken over by the fucking cats. And General Gunner failed to prevent that without our aid. I don't know, even know if he's still alive. Lost in action, they say. Our hesitation might have already killed my father. A collective, collective gasp falls through the group. I pull the sword out of Jake's chest and thrust it into the ice in front of me. He's still in shock, but he's going to be fine. That will teach him not to disobey me again. Instead, I stared at the heaving, exhausted enemy in the middle of the group. Sir Burry Tangle Root. You both have people we are devoted to. I understand your grief. I ask you to try and understand mine. You heard the will of the pack, and I'm willing to honor it. I'm granting you mercy, Burry Tangaroot. Leave now, and your life will be spared. Your human friend's freedom is forfeit, but who will live on without having to grieve your loss. This is what he'd want. And such is the wish of everyone gathered here. Everyone looks at the St. Bernard Dog quietly. I can feel the silent pleading saturating the emotional space among them. He looks at my soldiers with the conflict and guilt. Then he, return he turns his head in the direction of the human, now bound, unconscious, and held in Oreo's big arms. He trembles, and finally falls to one knee. A yelp escapes his throat, and a cry of sorrow shut shudders his big torso as his head hangs down in shame. Oh yes, I can feel so much grief in him. It's only natural. Forgive me. Forgive me, everyone. He raises his head with his eyes wide open and frozen tears running down his cheeks. You should not have stopped him. A shockwave runs through our feet as everyone is surprised. Burry bashes his man a charged fist right beneath him. The moment the knuckles thrust through the ice, the faint spark is like a curved, inverted lightning, pierces through the depths of the frozen lake. I and all my soldiers ready our weapons, observing Burry with utmost caution. What has he done? I have a bad feeling about this. As if in an interlude to a nightmare, all of our surroundings seem to progressively grow darker. 
the ice itself loses its luster. Then I look down. Deep in the black depths of the lake, I see a glint of light. A relic glowing at the bottom of the lake. Run to the shore! shouted Rune in panic as the ice around them started to split into giant chunks. The freezing cold water shot from between the cracks under terrible pressure. He growled when he finally understood the full extent of Burry's guile. The dog wasn't just stomping at the ice aimlessly all the time. He was searching for something. The ice melting relic they used to trap the Colossus of Mooresbrook in the past. The St. Bernard dog used his very last mana strike to charge it once more and break the winter seal under their feet. Everything became chaos. All the soldiers forgot about Burry and the human in their desperate run towards the shore. Rune heard a painful shout of someone's limb being crushed between the giant blocks of ice. In other places, the frost already became so thin that it broke under the heavier soldiers' feet. Soon after that, Rune himself fell into the cold, dark depths as well. A spark of fear flared through the confu his confused mind. He instinctively forced himself to swim back to towards the surface, but he couldn't ignore the sight of someone, some of the weaker soldiers struggling in their heavy armor sets. Resisting a growl of frustration, he swam from one to the other, slicing the straps of their gear, helping them free themselves from their weight. The more capable soldiers started helping each other, drawing themselves close to the shore. Through that whole endeavor, Rune hasn't resurfaced to take a breath even once, and he finally started to feel the toll in his body. But then, he, when he tried to finally reach the surface, a powerful wave threw him away from, like a single leaf in a hurricane, and an impossibly loud, deep roar almost deafened him, even through the muffled water. His back hit the rock bed of the lake, close to the shore, a dozen meters above him. He could see the surface, already regrowing a thin layer of glistening frost. He looked to the center of the lake, where a gigantic creature waved its huge limbs through the water, struggling to keep its impossibly huge body afloat. Shaggy long, dark hair covered its towering body, and two huge white eyes glowed in its snarling face, a big, bright as two pools of molten light. It paid no mind to Rune or any other of the soldiers. Instead, it tilted its head south, towards the town of Mooresbrook. With each slow movement of its massive limbs, and the huge, each huge wave sent across the lake, the Colossus drew cl closer to the southern shore. Desperation filled Rune's mind. In fear of the innocent's lives, he made a difficult decision. Choking on the lake's water and struggling to stay afloat himself, he poured his mana into the Noonlight Oath. With strength and conviction, he shouted out the chant that awakened the light inside the legendary blade. He dove back down towards the rocky bottom and, kicking himself back up with all the strength of the powerful legs, he jumped high above the surface. Did he swim out of the water? I don't know. Water droplets and thin shards of ice sprayed all around him, refra refracting the bright light of his luminous blade in a full rainbow of colors as he held the weapon firmly in a reverse grip. With a shout, he thrust the oath toward, uh, forward, and it flew across the lake like an arrow of light, spreading dancing sparks through the cold mist. Feeling the approach of the sudden surge of magic, the giant monster finally turned its giant head towards Rune. The hair on its face rose and crackled as the creature's magic started manifesting around it. However, it only managed a single guttural growl 
before the sword drove its full length in between the creature's eyes, and the whole skull lit up with a loud explosion of burning light. As the luster of the monster's eyes grew dim, its whole body dr drowned back into the dark waters, taking the invaluable legendary sword with it. So did Rune Moon grow cold and lifeless in the cold embrace of the eternal waters lake. Or lake waters. I think with that, we should probably call it just a bit early because, you know, different scenes and all that stuff. And we'll try to remember to actually save this time so we don't, you know, start it late. So anyways, that's going to be the end of this Let's Play. Ooh, woof. I do like doing Let's Plays. It can be tiring on me because it's, you know, constant talking. Unless I'm like, let's say, doing Komorebi or Winds of Change. I think that's the only two that had voice acting, which actually gave me time off. Not like Major Minor or Don Course or uh, Dastra. I actually didn't read that one, but I read Como. Uh, what are the other ones? I have I have a list here. Let's see. Intera and Camilla. I'll I'll really be happy to see more of those things because that they seemed interesting. You know? What is that? New folder? Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, that's going to be the end of this Let's Play. But, you know, while we're here, let's just see. Um, how's my face? It seems to be okay. Actually, I guess I could have it right there. Oops. Let's put it right over there. Did I do that? Oh, seems fine. It doesn't go around wildly like it does if I put it up there. <laughs> okay, what am I looking for? Itch, I, O, uh, shelter. Oh, it is on Itch, I, O. Okay, cool. And five bucks for version 2.8. You know, the most updated one. Uh, version 2.7 is... I mean... Hmm. I guess I could just, you know, down, but then I would have to, you know, see the skippy thingy. I could only do them between the last boys, but we could see that, you know. And I'll just download that and then put it on the side. So anyways, that's going to be the end of this. Let's play. So come, guess, like, come, see what you like, dislike, tips, tricks, always. And if you like my YouTube and links to grow, then please like, subscribe, and check out the videos to help you grow. And please remember to spay new animals to help control the pit population. Yeah, psionic connections, that's quite a bit, and so is Tennis Ace. Interesting. And Minotaur Hotel. I mean, that's like 1.7k. Oh, so many furry visual novels, so little voice, and so little amount of being able to do things without having have my throat hecked out, or people wondering why I'm, you know, talking about gay foeys. Anyways, until Spain Europe, and until next time, let's play me, Game of Six of Shelter. So thanks and see ya.